Hello everyone. So today I want to talk with you a little bit about reason or faith. And the Rambam in Ilhot Meila 8.8 writes, It is appropriate that one meditate according to his intellectual capacity regarding the laws of the Torah to understand their deeper meanings. Throughout the ages, Torah observant Jews follow the dictates of the Torah as a matter of basic faith. And this is how it should be. Our adherence to the Torah and its laws cannot be dependent upon our finding them satisfactory. First of all, we need to do what we need to do because Hashem commands us to do it. Yeah, This is the principle of Naseh Nishma. We accept to do and we will hear what Hashem, um, what Am Yisrael said when they were on Mount Sinai and took upon themselves the Torah first time, yeah? They said, Naseh Nishma. we accept to do and we will hear. First we, we, we will do and then we will hear. The declaration of commitment which precedes the receiving, the receiving of the Torah itself, acceptance of this principle, unconditional commitment to the will of Hashem, it is a uh, prerequisite to acceptance of the Torah. One who puts the commandments of Hashem under scrutiny before un- unreservedly assuming their fulfillment, fulfillment is essentially not accepting the dictates of Hashem, but rather those of his own intellect. And he recognized no higher authority than that of his judgment. As Rabbi Yonah so pointedly states, for if a servant says to his master, I will do all that you will tell me except one thing, he has shed the yoke of his master and does not does what he is fitting it's fitting in his own eyes. Acceptance of the Torah entails subordination to its law, regardless of whether or not we can intellectually comprehend their logic or emotionally identify with them. That's why when we take upon ourselves the Torah, we need to take upon ourselves all the laws, even those who that we don't understand, even those who um, <laughs> that we look upon and we see no logic for doing them. Yes, we accept upon ourselves everything because Hashem said, and we are following this book of instructions that tells us how to live our life better in a better way. And following all the mitzvot and following what Hashem tells us, uh, it's helping us to become better humans, better people, um, to correct ourselves in this world, to to manage to survive with one another, to interact with one another, and to have a relationship with uh, the master of the world. This being so, any examination of the meaning of mitzvot seems superfluous. Why bother explaining something that requires no rationalization? Okay, so why do we explain the mitzvot? Yeah, the fact that Hashem commands us to perform a mitzvah is reason enough, indeed the only reason that a mitzvah may must be carried out. Nevertheless, the Rambam, the Rambam's ruling clear states that not only is one permitted to meditate upon the meaning of the mitzvot, it is appropriate to do so. Here lies the dilemma. Granted that we should ponder the mitzvot, but isn't this ultimately an exercise of fertility? Can the finite mind of man actually grasp the infinite wisdom hidden within each mitzvah? Surely, any interpretation that we may offer, it's a product of human understanding. Can our limited faculties comprehend and encapsulate the true meaning of the divine mitzvah? Perhaps we need to re-examine the purpose of attempting to understand the mitzvot. And mitzvot needs no explanation. Our sages teach one who, in referring to the mitzvah of Shiluah HaKen, the chasing away of the mother birds before taking her eggs or chicks, says, even young birds merit your kindness, is silent. The purpose of understanding a mitzvah is not to comprehend what is accomplished with the mitzvah, but rather to perceive the lesson to be drawn from the mitzvah. Hashem does not need us to carry for his creatures. He has countless means at his disposal. The pr- purpose of the mitzvah of Shiluah HaKen is that we internalize feelings of compassion. Thus, when we investigate the reason behind any of the mitzvot, it is not to explain the mitzvah, but to discover what we may draw from it and how it may inspire us. The understanding of the rational of the mitzvah elevates its performance from a mere physical act to an act that makes a spiritual significant impact on our lives. When we understand what we are doing with every mitzvah, we do that better. We do that with more passion. We do that with more heart. Of course we do it because Hashem commanded us to do. But we understand the meaning behind it. It makes it fire, you know. And 
I think Hashem really wants our heart, not only our deeds, not only what we uh, give, also to put our souls inside, because when we do it with our souls, we do it with everything we have. And this is the only way to connect with the Creator. Since any theory or explanation advances a rational for a mitzvah is merely conjuncture, one can never draw a lucky conclusion from any interpretation of a mitzvah, even one presented by early, earlier authorities. As valid as any interpretation may be, it certainly does not reflect the complete spectrum of the meaning of the mitzvah. Just as the Torah itself is infinite, so too it's each of its mitzvot. Yes, simultaneously, since we are enjoyed to ponder the meaning of its mitzvot, any hypothesis about their rational congruent with the known principles of Torah guidance is valid and enhance the effect of the mitzvah upon men. Furthermore, one should never be tempted to detach the moral lesson of the mitzvah from its performance. One may feel that once he has penetrated the meaning of the mitzvah and drawn from it inspiration and wisdom, he may neglect the actual performance of the mit- mitzvah ritual. So in the moment you learn about the mitzvah, you learn uh, um, what it teaches you, then then sometimes said, okay, I, I learned my lesson, so now I don't need to do it again. No, because each time this mitzvah is teaching you something else. This mitzvah is not only for that, it's for many, many things, yes? So this is incorrect. As the Rambam teaches, if one experiences a spiritual awakening, he must concretize it, and it has to have in in any permanent, it has to have permanence. It is insufficient to be a good Jew in heart or mind. Torah is a Torah, Torah Chaim, a Torah of life, and all its exalted ideas must find active expressions and actualization in daily life. The obligation to keep the mitzvot is therefore independent of any understanding of them. One who performs a mitzvah without any thought of its meaning has nevertheless fulfilled his obligation, albeit it in a diminished form, while one who contemplates and internalizes but ignores the mitzvah act has in no way discharged his responsibility and remains liable for the sin of omission and its accompanying penalty. The principles of Nasev and Nishma does not only mean that we accept the Torah without precondition, but also that Nishma, the hearing and understanding of the mitzvah, follows and is secondary to the Nase, its actual fulfillment. Internally, internally internalizing the mitzvah it's only meaningful when coupled with the performance of the mitzvah they go together now i say i'm going to do for me to understand why for the mitzvah to help me better to help me become the better me yeah this is the tandem with the action of prekavot anyone whose wisdom excess his good deeds his wisdom will not endure just as the fire of the candle cannot exist Without a wick on which to kindle, so the most profound and exalted concepts contained in the divine wisdom of mitzvot must find physical expression in order to be sustained. Stay tuned for our next class that is going to be about reason and taste. Have a great, great day.